The Vow is a romantic movie about love and resilience. It is a perfect fit for Valentine's Day. The movie revolves around a happily married couple, Leo and Paige, whose car gets hit by a truck on a snowy night. The aftermath takes a toll on their marriage, as Paige loses all memories of her life with her husband. It's a movie about true love, obstacles, cherished moments, and family. Paige is a law school dropout who, after a fallout with her wealthy parents, switched to the Art Institute to pursue her studies. She took up sculpting before meeting Leo. Leo, on the other hand, owns a recording studio, and despite having no fancy degrees or 9-to-5 jobs, he is a nightmare to Paige's parents. The two cross paths at the permit zone, and their story has been nothing short of a romance since then. Their love for each other is evident. The smiles on their faces tell it all. Eating desserts, tickling the living daylights out of each other, and sharing corny jokes are some of the things they share in common. The movie starts with the couple leaving an event as the cold and snowy night hits them. They rush into their car, in such high spirits as they head home. When they arrive, Leo parks their car in the car park and Paige gets the idea to get cozy with her husband right there. Leo is a sight for sore eyes and with the freezing weather outside, the cold had to be chased one way or the other. Just as things were getting interesting, their car was suddenly rammed into by a truck that appeared to have lost control. Everything happened in a flash but Leo was saved due to wearing his seatbelt. Unfortunately, Paige wasn't as lucky since she wasn't wearing one and the impact hurled her out of the car. At the hospital, Leo wakes up battered and bruised. He is devastated by the news from the doctor that Paige had suffered a brain injury and had been put in a coma. Some of their friends come to show their support, but Leo remains anxious as he awaits her recovery. He reflects on some of the special memories they shared together, Paige's fixation with her favorite stray cat. Even though Leo's supposedly allergic to cats, when he asked her to move in, and the heartfelt vows they made to each other on their wedding day, he reminisces fondly at how she'd become so passionate and worked up while sculpting with the music blaring, and how he'd calm her down with tickles. Paige comes out of the coma groggy and disoriented. Leo is happy but his happiness is short-lived when it becomes clear that Paige does not remember him. She is surprised and doesn't believe him when he tells her that they are married. She stares in rude shock at her finger which has a wedding band on it that confirms his claim. It's a hard blow for Leo to swallow and he appears obviously hurt when she recoils at his touch. He storms out of the room in anger while Dr. Fishman runs after him. She tries to reassure him that Paige's memory loss is normal and that she will recover. This new twist in their lives terrifies Leo and the doctor's reassurance does nothing to calm him down about Paige's condition. Despite their disconnect, Paige still laughs at his jokes and asks for food just like they did before the accident. She complains about her hair which does not suit her pre-Leo and sorority girl standards which is all she remembers. When she gets stronger, she becomes curious to find out more about herself. Leo fills her in on what she does and she is surprised to hear that she was a sculptor and not a lawyer as her last memories are from her being in law school. Their friends are a great support system to Leo. He confides in them that he is worried that she won't remember the love they shared, but they reassure him that she will regain her memory with time. On his next visit to the hospital to see her, he is scared to his pants when he does not find Paige in her hospital room. The nurse directs him to a more expensive wing where she has been moved to. He is surprised to find Paige with her estranged parents, Bill and Rita, whom he was meeting for the first time. Sadly, Paige had a fallout with her parents and severed all ties with them to the extent they were not aware that she was married. He introduces himself to them as their son-in-law but they are furious at him for concealing Paige's accident from them. Paige finds it bizarre that her so-called husband had never met her parents but her mother changes the subject. I suspect a fishy tale, Rita. As per the doctor's advice for Paige to settle back into her normal routine to aid her recovery, Leo and Paige's parents battle it out on who will take primary responsibility for Paige, but Leo is not backing down without a fight for his wife. Paige remembers herself as being family-oriented and finds it hard to believe that she got married without her family's consent. Leo hesitates to tell her the truth that she cut off ties with her family, especially her dad after she caught him with her best friend from high school, Diane. He does not want to give any more reason to continue with the strained relationship she had with them before the accident. All he gives her is a weak excuse that Bill opposed her career change, but this doesn't resolve the confusion in Paige's mind about their marriage. She is wary of Leo and does not take his word that they are truly married and since she never kept a diary, she demands proof to show that their marriage actually happened before she makes any decisions. Leo scrambles and miraculously produces a voice recording from Paige to him just at the nick of time before she leaves with her parents. He advises her to stay with him and also consider that there must be a reason why she fled from her parents before the accident. She is confused about what to do, but finally agrees to try living with him just to juggle her memory, despite her parents' disapproval. She promises to return back to them if things do not turn out well for her at Leo's. Their drive home is filled with lots of questions from Paige. She is surprised to hear that Obama, who she remembers as a senator has become the president, and that she even voted for him. They arrive, but Paige does not seem to remember their home. She is treated to a surprise party thrown by their friends and well-wishers. Unaccustomed to the unfamiliar crowd including their hugs and the loud music, Paige takes refuge inside. 
When Leo notices her discomfort, he ends the party and sends everyone away with an apology until they are alone. An emotional page lashes out at him for ambushing her and orders him out of their room for the night as punishment. Easy Tiger. The next morning, she is appalled to find out she has a tattoo on her back, an obvious diversion from the preppy girl she still remembers as the old page who would not dare get a tattoo. Tensions are calm and they share a laugh when Leo walks in on her both naked in the dressing room. She is embarrassed and she advises him to knock before entering the room. The disagreement from the night is forgiven as Leo apologizes to Paige with a full spread of breakfast. He finds it funny and is unable to cover his smile when she comes out for breakfast, wearing his hoodie. The younger Paige, it seems, was not only a meat-eater but also a modest dresser, as she claims the clothes in the wardrobe were not her style. Page Zero Amnesia One Leo reminds her of some of her routines and promises to take up some chores until she gets better. It's quite difficult for him to navigate their new relationship as he can't choose between giving her a peck or a hug before leaving for work. He settles for a weird pad on her back and leaves while Paige continues to munch on her bacon. At work, Leo is further stressed out when his partner Lily complains of being left alone to take care of work. He is unhappy at the big gigs their recording studio has missed out on because of his absence. He is contrite and promises to make it up to her starting by attending a work pitch later in the day. Back at home, Paige finds Leo's stash of their marriage evidence. She gets emotional watching their wedding video, especially during the vows. Inspired by it, she decides to explore the city a bit as she visits the pie shop at Café Mnemonic where they had their wedding. She is excited when the waitress recognizes her and reminds her of her usual order at the cafe. When it's time to return home, her brain gets fuzzy and she doesn't remember the way back, and without her phone, she has no way of contacting Leo. With nothing else to do, Paige calls her mother from a stranger's phone. Luckily for her, she remembers her number from before and when she picks her up, they go shopping for clothes that suit her perceived style more. Meanwhile, Leo returns home with some beautiful flowers for Paige but meets an empty house. He gets worried about Paige and how she would be able to navigate the city, especially without the phone he left for her. He cancels the work pitch event he promised Lily he would attend while he searches for Paige, but his search is unfruitful. He returns home, worried sick to his stomach. She returns home with a pep in her steps. It's obvious that she had a good time with her mom. Even when Leo queries her on her whereabouts, she acts nonchalant, oblivious of his hurt feelings. Her parents invite them to their first dinner in their home, and Leo has no choice but to go with her as he is the designated driver. He notices that the new page is snotty and is concerned more with appearances, as she reminds him to change into something more formal for the dinner. She talks all through their drive to her parents' house, and Leo finds it disconcerting that she remembers all about her old life, downright to her parents' neighbor's mailbox, but has no memory of him or their marriage. Paige reunites with her sister, Gwen, at dinner, and it looks like the sisters have a wedding to plan. Thankfully, Bill and Rita would be able to attend at least one daughter's wedding. How is it possible that a vegetarian's favorite food is filet mignon? Runs through Leo's mind as he learns from Rita that Paige's favorite food is filet mignon. He is forced to keep quiet when Paige signals him with her eyes not to make a fuss at the table. During dinner, Bill tries to get Leo to talk about himself, seeing as it was their first official meeting. Leo appears to be the odd one at the table as they are richer than him. They look askance at him, with confusion written all over their faces, as he tells them he owns a recording studio and also tries to explain his passion for his work to them. The sisters decide to go have fun at the club they frequent, but Leo is unhappy with it, and when he shows concern for Paige's health, she waves him off without a care and meets up with her friends from high school. She introduces him to them, and out of the blue, her ex-fiancé Jeremy shows up. Evidently, they were good friends and lovers growing up until Paige suddenly broke up with him before moving away from home. It's obvious that there are still some sparks between them. Going by the long stares they give each other, Leo is threatened by their connection. He is forced to introduce himself to Jeremy as Paige's husband and this breaks their stare off as Jeremy saunters off. Leo is left standing while Paige continues mingling with her friends. He sticks out like a sore thumb at the party while he watches Paige, with disbelief at the way she acts like a preppy schoolgirl with her sorority sisters. He is angsty the next day as he complains to Lily about the events of the other night. He is angry that Paige remembers Jeremy and their feelings for each other while she does not even recognize him. Lily advises him to try tickling her to remind her of their past since it was their thing before she lost her memory. Leo is apprehensive of the idea but agrees to do it. Paige on a whim visits Jeremy at work to try to make some sense of their breakup and maybe get some information from him on why she shut her friends and family out of her life for five years. It's a sort of reunion for the ex-lovers as they try to hash out the past. He informs her that she changed suddenly and wasn't sure about many things again, including their relationship which led to her dumping him. She appears to still have some feelings for him as she inquires about the ring and if he has a girlfriend. On her way out, they share a hug, and as a force of habit, also share a private moment. She returns home, inspired by all the people she has met and the information she has. She wants to make a timeline of her life, to try to see if she is able to pinpoint her last memory before waking up at the hospital. Even though her time with Leo is still in the Lost Files area, 
he still supports her idea. Obviously stressed from all the work, Leo massages her shoulders and tries Lily's advice to tickle Paige on her sides. It ends badly for him as she jumps in fright, caught unaware. He hurries out of the room in embarrassment. At this point he is barely hanging on by a thread, mentally, while Paige tries to apologize to him. Later on, Paige indicates interest to visit her sculpting space. Leo is giddy just like a child handed a lollipop. He is more than happy to show her the place, and when they get there, he tries to juggle her mind on the story behind her work and the huge art commission she won recently. He insists that Paige should try working on something, but unfortunately, she seems to have lost her mojo and does not remember anything about the shop. But Leo does not give up. He turns on the music to the highest just the same way the old Paige does for inspiration. But Paige does not appreciate the noise. It's clearly causing her a migraine but Leo is oblivious to her discomfort. She throws a fit and orders him to turn down the music. He shuts the radio hard and lashes out at her. He is clearly fed up with the situation and complains about being used as her punching bag. Tempers run high in the store and he storms out dejectedly while Paige is remorseful and regrets her behavior to him. Later on, Leo tries to make it up to her and gets her favorite snacks, but he is too late. He returns home to find Bill ready to take Paige back home to him and his wife. He is hurt when he discovers Paige's plan to sneak off without informing him. She claims it is to help her sister Gwen plan her wedding. But Leo is not fooled as he knows she is running away from their strained relationship. He is anxious to stop her from leaving him and reminds her of her art project. But Paige informs him that Bill has agreed to lend her money to repay them their advance. When he warns her to be careful of her parents, he stops short so he does not get to talk more about the issue. Paige is weirded out at his advice to remain careful of her parents. She laughs it off and they share an awkward hug before she leaves. At Dr. Freeman's for a checkup, Paige confesses to her that she is afraid to learn about her past as she is skeptical of what it contains, as it could be either good or bad. Dr. Freeman encourages her to try her best to allow herself to remember her past and make amends where necessary. Meanwhile, Leo makes the decision to fight for his marriage, without any care in the world for his business's survival, to Lily's dismay. He leaves her high and low at the studio while he is dressed in awkward-looking formal clothes to make Paige fall in love with him again. At the pre-wedding party, he gets in the good books of Gwen when he helps her fiancé, Ryan, out of a sticky situation with Gwen. He is surprised that the Paige he knew is quite different from the Paige at the party as she dons a different hairstyle, and even indicates interest in new things. He is not perturbed as he lets her in on his plan to renew the spark in their relationship by reminding her of their past experiences. He asks her out on a date, to which she agrees. He is jittery as he prepares to the ninth to impress Paige in his quest. He takes her to some of their spots like the city's permit center where they met, and the mnemonic cafe where they played a game as they shared their favorite chocolate box. They top off their date with a swim in the water, as is their tradition, after which they share a passionate moment together. Their date is a perfect one as they have so much fun together. It is filled with lots of laughter, and they relive their favorite moments without undue pressure. He drops her off at her parents' house. It's quite awkward between them when Leo reassures her of his love for her, but Paige doesn't give him a response. She finds Gwen inside, who inquires from her where she went to. Gwen roots for Leo but this makes Paige emotional as she breaks down in tears while Gwen rushes to console her. She is confused about her life and some of the decisions she made after she left home. Gwen hugs her tight and is surprised to see her cry as she hardly ever showed her emotions. Leo returns home to a slew of debts, reminding him of the several payments he has to make, especially with Paige out of the picture to share them with. Gwen's wedding is a beautiful affair, even though Leo sticks out like a sore thumb with no one to talk to, while Paige is busy having fun with her friends. While he people watches, Bill approaches him to have a talk with him about Paige. He advises him to divorce her in a bid to save his business and manage his debts that are piling already. Leo gets furious at him for suggesting a divorce and acting like he cared about his daughter, even though he never came looking for her all through the time when they were married. He is angered at Bill's sudden show of concern for Paige when he was the main reason why she broke off contact with her family, five years ago. He storms out, only for Jeremy to accost him. The air is tense between them as they exchange words over Paige. Jeremy taunts him, saying that he recently shared a private moment with Paige after she threw herself at him. Leo is infuriated and socks him on the jaw, which draws the crowd to them, including an angry Paige. She is furious at him for creating a scene at the wedding and storms out. He follows her, which leads to a tense exchange between them. Leo accuses her of throwing herself at Jeremy and looking at him the way she used to look at him. He comes to terms with the fact that Paige might never regain her memory or even remember their love and decides to end his chase. It's an emotional moment between the two as they painfully decide to end things between them for good. He finds his way to his studio. Lily is surprised to find him strumming a melancholic tune on his guitar. She is sad to hear that Leo has given up, but he informs her that they will be together again, if they are really meant to be. But he believes they were not meant to be, as Paige fell in love with him barely one week after they met. 
In the spirit of being truly over her, he packs up all of Paige's things, both at the house and at the store, and also signs off on the divorce papers. Meanwhile, Paige has settled in a life with her parents. She runs into her estranged friend from high school, Diane, who has been avoiding her since she came back. Diane reveals that she slept with her father Bill and this led to a strain in their friendship and also with Paige's relationship with her parents. Paige is stunned at the new information, which perfectly explains the entire puzzle that has been her life since she woke up from the coma. Nobody told her about it, and she is furious when she confirms from Gwen that it is indeed true. She confronts her mom at home after adding two and two together. She feels betrayed that her family never cared to tell her the past, despite trying her best to remember it. Rita claims she stayed back and did not leave Bill because she wanted to keep her family, and they didn't tell her so they wouldn't lose her again. Paige makes the decision to follow Leo's advice and leave her parents' house so she can figure out her life. She confronts Leo about her father's affair, and he admits that he knew about it but didn't want to drive her away from her parents. He advises her not to make the same mistake she made in the past by cutting off ties with her family. Her stay at the university to continue with her law degree, which her father revived, doesn't last long, as she rediscovers her first love, arts, and decides to follow it. She finally finds the courage to end it properly with Jeremy, with the decision to find herself first. She also meets with her father and informs him of her decision to leave law school and get an apartment for herself. He is not happy with her decision, especially when he thinks she will cut off ties with the family just like before, but Paige assures him that she would remain in touch with them. Life gets better for everyone as Leo focuses on his studio work, while Paige moves back to the city and re-enrolls at the Art Institute, concentrating on her painting and sculpting, while also spending more time with her family. Paige, one day, finds her wedding vows written on the cafe's menu in her box of belongings. She reads through it, and thoughts about Leo go through her mind. They meet up at their cafe spot and talk about their new lives. He is happy to hear that she resides close by and has continued with her sculpting. Paige admits that she has been making more efforts to learn about them from their friend Sonia. They are both happy that they have been successful in their separate endeavors. The film ends happily as they decide to make new memories, instead of depending on the ones Paige is unable to remember.